Hello and welcome to video 3 for week 8. In the first video for this week, I defined the concept of a determinant. In the second video, we talked about how to calculate them. In this video, I want to go over several properties of determinants. First, if I have two n by n matrices, I can multiply the two matrices together. Matrix multiplication encodes composition of transformation, so A times B means what happens if I do the transformation B and then the transformation A. The determinant says, well, what's the effect on orientation and volume of that composition? Well, the effect turns out to be the product of the two determinants. And hopefully that makes a little sense, because if A changes area by a factor of 2 and B changes area by a factor of 3, then the total change in area should be a factor of 6, 2 times 3 because the changes, the effect of the changes are multiplication. We multiply by 2, then we multiply by 3. That's the same as multiplying by 6. And if B flips orientation and A flips orientation, then the composition in total should preserve orientation. Because if you flip and then flip back, you're back in the original orientation. Well, that makes sense as well, because if the determinants are both negative, their product will now be positive, and the composition will preserve orientation. So hopefully from the multiplicative nature of what the determinant measures, it makes some sense that the determinant of a matrix product is the product of the two determinants. Note this is a matrix product. This is the product of two numbers. Determinant A and determinant B are numbers. We multiply them together. Now if A is invertible, the deter or if yes, if A is invertible, the determinant of the inverse is the reciprocal of the determinant. And again, hopefully that makes sense as well, because if A multiplies area by 3, the inverse has to undo this, which would multiply area by 1 third. So we get the opposite multiplicative effect by taking the reciprocal. And this actually lets us notice that A is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. This only makes sense if the determinant is non-zero. And it turns out if the determinant is non-zero, that's enough to prove that the, the transformation is in fact invertible, um, and then its inverse will have the reciprocal as the determinant. This brings us back to the discussion of properties of invertible matrices. So if I have a matrix, all of the things on this page are in fact equivalent to the matrix being invertible. So whether it has a rank n, whether it row reduces the identity, whether its kernel is zero, whether its image is everything, whether its column space or its row space is everything, whether its columns or its rows are independent, whether its determinant is non-zero, whether the solution, the system AU equals V has a unique solution whenever I know V and I'm solving for U. Um, equivalently, if I put it, it into an extended matrix for a system with V as the column of constants, it will always row reduce to give me a unique solution. So AU equals V has a unique solution for fixed V. All of these things are equivalent, and this is really nice. This is a nice way to go back and forth between a bunch of properties that are defined all through the course, all relating back to whether or not a transformation, a matrix, is invertible. Let me finish off in just a couple more properties of the determinant. Um, the determinant of a product doesn't depend on the order. Now remember that matrix multiplication is non-commutative. In general, AB and BA are not going to be the same thing. However, they will have the same effect on size and orientation. Their determinants will be the same thing. If we multiply everything in a matrix by a constant, the effect is A to the N times the determinant, so N being the size of the matrix. And lastly, I'd like to know what the effect of the row operations is on the determinant. Row operations are things that I do when I row reduce. If I exchange two rows, the determinant changes by negative one. If I multiply a row by a constant, I also multiply the determinant by that constant. And then the really surprising one, adding one row to another doesn't change the determinant. And if we want, we can use this to actually give us a different way of calculating determinants, is we can row reduce to the identity. The identity has determinant one. And then if we know what happens in each step of the row reduction, we can use these rules to go backwards and calculate the determinant of the original matrix.